Hello, lovely people. Terrific Tuesday to you. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10, still here in Buffalo, New York. Yesterday, I told you about the remarkable story of the Buffalo Bills, who rallied in their final game of the regular season for their injured teammate, Damar Hamlin, who suffered cardiac arrest during their game last week. Well, I am happy to report that Damar has been released from the hospital in Cincinnati and is back in Buffalo. So some encouraging news to start our day. All right, we've got a big show for you, but only 10 minutes to do it, so let's get to it. We start with the latest news from Brazil. Political unrest gripping the streets of Brazil this week. Supporters of the country's former president, Jair Bolsonaro, storming official buildings in the capital to protest what they believe was a stolen election. The election was narrowly won by former Brazilian president Lula da Silva, who first served in the role from 2003 to 2011. But Bolsonaro encouraged supporters to question the country's electronic voting system. Over 1,000 people were arrested for protesting. Bolsonaro supporters have been camping out in tent cities ever since the election back in October. The new president will face major challenges early on as divisions in the country feel profound. More now from CNN's Rafael Romo, a senior Latin American affairs editor of CNN Worldwide. Brazil boiling over. Supporters of former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro storm key buildings in the country's capital Sunday, breaching security barriers and temporarily occupying the country's Congress, Presidential Palace and Supreme Court. Masses of protesters flooded the country's seat of power, many dressed in the colors of Brazil's flag yellow and green, fueled by anger and distrust over Bolsonaro's defeat in a runoff election last October where he lost by less than two percentage points to current president Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. Protesters threw objects and scaled the roofs of buildings while clashing with police who responded with tear gas. At least one protester was seen sitting at the desk of Brazil's Congress president. CNN Brazil reports the floor of the Congress building was flooded after the sprinkler system activated when protesters attempted to set fire to the carpet. By evening, police began dispersing the rioters from buildings and arrested hundreds of people who were detained in buses before being taken to the police station. President Lula da Silva, who was inaugurated just a week ago, described the events as barbaric and vowed to punish the people responsible. Those people that we call fascists, we call them everything that's abominable in politics. They invaded the government headquarters and they invaded the Congress like vandals, destroying everything in their path. President Lula da Silva also blamed his predecessor for the lack of security in the capital, where Bolsonaro's supporters have been camped out for over a week. Bolsonaro, who is currently in Florida, denounced what he called the depredations and invasions of public buildings in a tweet, adding that peaceful and lawful demonstrations are part of democracy. But critics say Bolsonaro may have stirred up the crowds by repeatedly saying, without evidence, that he questioned the integrity of the country's electronic voting system. 10-second trivia. After China, India, and the United States, which country has the highest population? Pakistan, Russia, Indonesia, or Mexico? Home to over 275 million people, the fourth most populated country in the world is the archipelago of Indonesia. Next, we're traveling to the province of Bali, Indonesia, where Bali is facing a water crisis. Once clean water is dirty from tourism development, population growth, and water mismanagement. While Bali sees a lot of rain, water shortages are already impacting Bali's culture and the people's quality of life. And experts warn the situation will worsen if water control practices aren't properly implemented. Let's go now to Bali to learn more. Indonesian province of Bali is known for its rich culture, breathtaking natural beauty, and rain. Lots of rain. But while tourism took a hit during the COVID-19 pandemic, a five-month rainy season doesn't stop millions from visiting the island in a typical year. And for those who live here, the seasonal deluge serves as a reminder of an ongoing water crisis. In fact, one innovative local school has made the stuff of life the centerpiece of its curriculum. 
We chose water as a theme for last year and this year because despite what everybody thinks, there's a water shortage in Bali. We have rains for months and months and months and they fill the reservoirs, but very, very quickly those reservoirs run dry. More tourists and residents take a dramatic toll on the island's natural water resources, but that's not the only concern. Just in the last 10 years, many, many villages have been noticing their once clean water has turned very, very dirty and no longer usable. We've noticed a, a very serious water crisis arising in a place where that really shouldn't be the case. Tucked away in a forested patch miles inland from the southern beaches, the Green School Bali was built to create the next generation of problem solvers. Currently on campus, there are 50 student-led projects that have been activated. Built from bamboo and other sustainable material, the impressive open-air facilities were designed to inspire imagination and creativity. Each structure a base for what the school's founders call a living curriculum. The point is to be part of reimagining education, to be something that inspires action-based learning now all across the globe. We are cultivating an optimistic, thoughtful, and positive approach to climate and climate action. We want them to feel hopeful. We want them to feel like they have the skills, they have the ability to engage proactively in the world. After a group of students became fascinated with biofuels, the school created a network of bio buses, each running on used cooking oil refined by science. You're looking at a really wide-ranging learning experience from enterprise to marketing to management because it became its own company and the largest biofuel transportation company in Indonesia. Dipta is an 11th grader driven to find solutions by the desperate need close to home. It starts off personally, right? The, the problem comes off from my hometown, Kinsamani, we didn't have enough water. And then after that, realizing that also a lot of other people don't have access to clean and drinkable water. He launched Liquify, a nonprofit with a mission to provide sustainable filtration systems, help residents build recharge wells that replenish aquifers, and water catchment systems to collect rainfall for other uses. The innovation hub that we have at Green School it gives me the tools to um, create what I need to create, what I want to create, and to help me help other people as well. The Green School Bali opened in 2008 and now includes locations in New Zealand, South Africa, and Mexico. Our mission is a community of learners making our world sustainable. And so when you put community back at the center of a school, you end up being more accountable for the actions that you take. And I think that's a good thing. It's the full spectrum of local to global, action-based environmental learning. And for today's 10 out of 10, a family in Plainville, Connecticut could barely believe what they discovered in their backyard. Their dog started acting all nervous one day and they soon learned a black bear was hibernating under their deck. After contacting their local environmental agency for advice, the family decided to do the bare minimum. They're gonna grin and bear it and have a backyard slum bear party all winter. Just uh, let the big fella snooze, I guess, and hibernate. And uh, around mid-March though, old Sleepy's gonna wake up and the first thing bears typically do is they search for food, so look out, doggy. All right, dad joke alert. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. <laughs> All right, time for our special shout out today. Madison County High School in Madison, Florida. Go Cowboys. Let's all do our part to make this world a bit of a better place, even if it's just making someone smile today. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10.